Hi everybody. I recently had myself a little bit of a shopping spree at American Science and Surplus. All kinds of goodies, fun things, useful things, and useless things available there. Something very useful, even though I have no immediate use for it right now, is this really long neck um, vice grip. And I have no immediate use for it, but when I saw it, I thought I gotta have it because I just know there's gonna be one day when I'll be very thankful that I actually had this in hand. It's gonna come in useful one day. If not for pulling teeth, it'll hopefully be for turning some kind of bolt or a nut. Also got a violet 405 nanometer laser because why the hell not? Lasers are fun, especially when they're violet color. You can even make things fluoresce, like this Philips LED here. Got the yellow phosphor glowing yellow and green, um, green glowing uranium glass bowl right here. If I had a gin and tonic, we could see that thing glow too. Another thing I've never had yet but was available from American Science and Surplus was the kilowatt meter. So that, you know, that'll certainly come in handy lots of times, I'm sure. And I got this. This is a combination timer, alarm clock, calculator, and USB hub. It's really, really bizarre product. I'll do a full teardown and review of this ridiculous monstrosity in another video. And finally, the focus of this video is going to be this line voltage monitor. It's really nothing special when you think about it compared to the kilowatt, but the reason I got it is because the scale on here from the pictures that I saw on the, the online catalog is completely linear, perfectly linear, 90, 100, 110 in the middle, 120, 130 volt, um, you know, it, and then from 90 to zero in that tiny little space. I just want to open this up and see how they get that linear scale from 90 to 130 rather than going from zero to 130. Usually with AC analog meters, you'd have perhaps zero to 30 volt in a very small space on the left side and then a very gradual logarithmic scale increasing to the higher voltages on the right side. But this one is a completely different thing, and I just want to open it up and see how the hell they do that. Here's a look at the, the back of the package. And I've opened this up already, but I haven't plugged it in yet, haven't tried it out. And one thing you might notice is that there's no markings on this whatsoever. No manufacturer model number, UL listing, or anything like that completely blank and the scale on here the colors you can see how the red and the green are a little offset from each other or it looks like the green is in line with the black but the red one is uh, a little bit uh, misaligned from the other two colors before i crack this thing open i want to test it just to see how accurate it is on this scale so i'll flip on the variac and then turn it up and I guess I should zoom in here too. Turn it back down to zero. And there's no movement at all on the needle. We're at 50 volts. Okay, well now we got some movement here. So around 70, 75 volts is when it finally starts moving. Let's turn it up to 90 on the analog scale, and we got 92 volts on the fluke. Again, we're up by 2 or 3 volts from the analog scale. Here at 110, we're actually showing 110. How about that? At 120, it's actually 3 volts lower. And that's as high as it's going to go because this variac is... Uh, right now wired for 120 volt output not for 140 and let's have one quick load test with a 1500 watt 
portable heater on this thing just to see if the voltage drops down a little bit after all it is it's pretty much its intended purpose for this thing just to monitor line voltage and see what happens when you put heavy loads on it so let's flip this on all the way to max load and it did indeed drop by about three volts I suppose because 120 on this scale was actually 117 volts on the fluke meter okay just three Phillips screws in the back of this thing I imagine it's just gonna be a rectifier full wave rectifier or maybe just a simple diode rectifier in there one diode and um, maybe capacitor filter not so sure about that and a uh, a zener diode I imagine would be in there so that it the meter it's going to be a DC meter that doesn't turn on until it actually overcomes the input overcomes the zener voltage and then that's when the meter starts going and also the DC meter in here is really really cheap I can just about see looking down there that it seems to be a, a couple of coils um, split apart like one here one here and then right in between the two coils is going to be a, a very small permanent magnet so it's not even a good quality to arsenal meter of movement in there it's going to be really really cheap inexpensive and quite inaccurate meter of movement and wow look at that i'm actually surprised to see a, a nice dark blue PCB in there with silk screen holy crap this really exceeded my expectations for a quality of the circuit board that's for sure and one thing I want to focus on is all these little white speckles on the the metal prongs in there for the the plug for the socket and that looks like the beginnings of tin whiskers starting to grow here's a close-up you can see how there's just all these little tiny speckles all over the place. They're definitely elevated above the surface. Little tiny bumps supposedly on tin plating is what I'm assuming that, that these are. These are just the beginnings of tin whiskers that are going to grow over the years even on the ground prong here let's have a look at the analog meter and wow this thing is even cheaper than I thought it only has one single coil on the top there's no symmetric coil on the bottom like I thought there might be and then there's just a couple of permanent magnets those two gray colored discs in there are a couple of permanent magnets there's also a couple of leds in there and i didn't really see them glow earlier probably because of all the excess lighting around here if i turn it plug it in and turn it on there we can see the two green leds shining shining through just faintly through the uh the white background of the the scale there now the wires on this coil are very very thin and they are soldered onto these much thicker looks like 22 gauge wire that um, gets was was going to the circuit board I just unsoldered it unsoldered the two of these so I can take out the circuit board without damaging the coil and also you can see how the screwdriver is slightly magnetized and just waving it around here is enough to move the coil around or move the magnets the permanent magnets around um, that's um, that's on the meter just take out these two screws here for the hot and neutral conveniently labeled on the circuit board there's an N there's an H and it should hopefully just come right out oh looks like the ground plug is coming out too and that wasn't quite enough because the magnet discs are in the way of the circuit board so let me carefully take this 
whole thing out of here. There we go. And the circuit board just pops right out. Let's have a look at the bottom. Well, that looks okay. Let's draw a circuit. And here it is. And I was right about a Zener diode being in there, but it's not what I expected. It's only a 10 volt Zener. I was expecting something like a 60 or 70 volt Zener because that's when we saw the needle actually start to move. That's not the case. So we have a 1N4005, that's a 600 volt PIV regular diode rectifier going into a 10K 2 watt resistor. That's this big gray beast right there. And then in series with the two green LEDs, finally going into the capacitor filter, 33 microfarad. It's actually a Nichicon capacitor. I was really surprised to see a good quality cap in here and likewise a good quality circuit board. It's, it's just very, very bizarre to see this kind of good craftsmanship inside an ultimately shit product. Anyway, then we got the, the Zener and the, the coil and another little capa uh, resistor over here, 3570 ohm, 1% tolerance resistor, just to tune the scale uh, to, the, um, to uh, you know, the proper settings so that this thing actually shows what you want it to show on the scale. I measured at the 120 volt position, which I have it on right there. That's the actual accurate 120 volt position according to what we saw from the fluke multimeter earlier. And I have 1.5 milliamp going through it and also measuring 1.36 volt across it right now. So that's, that's, gonna, that's, uh, that's the measurement for that. 910 ohm is the resistance of that coil. Anyway, this Zener diode doesn't have to have a very high voltage because most of the voltage drop coming from 120 volt over here is going to be on the 10K resistor right here. So this is going to be the primary limiting component in here. And then the, the Zener rectifier is again quite necessary to actually achieve this linear scale on the thing to go from 0 to 90 in that small tiny space you definitely need the Zener diode no matter what it's actually rated for it's that you have to have something in there that'll turn on at a set voltage so that the the needle will start to turn up at another set voltage and um, then for the rest of it you can get that nice linear scale. Well this is an unfortunate development. I was using the solder wick to take the solder out of the two holes right here that the coil was previously soldered into. Got the board in this vice grip like this and in the, the midst of my work I accidentally tipped tipped to this over and it landed right down here onto the coil and it, stuff went flying. These two copper leads came off the copper wire, the extremely thin copper wire of the coil is broken. There's the one lead right here. That's the, the outside of the coil. See, I can wind that out here very nicely. But the other end of this, the coil on the inside of the plastic spool, that's completely inaccessible. I have no idea where it even was um, hooked up going into that coil. So this thing is completely gone. By the way, you may notice that in contrast to a DeArsenval coil movement, there's no spring, there's no return spring um, you know, to bring it back to the zero position. So how does it actually go back to the zero position? And I discovered that the key is that this, there's a third magnet right here, this little tiny metal bar. That's a third magnet that attracts this other magnetic disc on the top. And then the magnet that's inside the coil, that's the one that actually gets actuated from current going through the coil, moving it back and forth. 
It's an interesting solution to have an analog meter like this. I think it's a very robust design, very durable, but ultimately extremely inaccurate. It would be more suitable as a rough indicating device than a precision measurement device, that's for sure. By the way, this little unpopulated spot right here with those two holes, those two vias, that would go right here and right there. So supposedly, if you decided to not include the two diodes, the two LEDs for some particular model that you didn't need any LED backlight, then of course you just put a little resistor in here to carry the current um, going across to the, the meter circuit. And it's not a total loss. I decided to put a 430 ohm resistor in, uh, in place of the, the coil. And um, the reason I chose 430 ohm is just because it's the closest ballpark resistor that I found laying around. So I whacked it in right in, in there and I could have just put a, a short circuit or something like that. It would work just fine. But anyway, that's, that's just to make the, the LEDs light up. I can have myself a nice little green LED night light. There it is all put back together. I'm sure it'll be quite bright in a very dark room and with my dark adapted eyes certainly certainly uh, an appreciable amount of light coming out of there and it doesn't occupy um, entirely an, an electrical outlet because I can plug something right into here plus one on the bottom so you know if I have some outlet and I need to put a whole bunch of things in it and a night light Hey, that's, uh, that's a really good deal here. And that is my review, teardown, accidental destruction, and modification of this Tempo line voltage monitor that I bought from American Science and Surplus for $9.50. And it seems kind of a little expensive for how cheap this thing actually happened to be, except of course for the PCB and the part selection on the PCB that was that was uh, some good quality stuff in there but the rest of it is just cheap crap the reason I bought this thing was specifically so I could see what's inside of it the circuit and figure out how they actually got this nice linear scale on a cheap analog meter that is an AC meter how, how to get a nice linear scale on measuring 90 volts AC to 130 volts AC and with a little tiny bit of zero, zero to 90 on the end. That's what I was really interested in is how the hell did they do that. And of course, the key component right here is the Zener diode. What I was planning to do though was to mark off the, uh, the actual readings, like right here I would put a line for 120 volt actual 115 happened to be right on the money and um or is it or it's 110 110 volts i think 100 volts was more like right here 90 volts was more like right there so i was just gonna calibrate this thing myself and then put it all back together put it into service use it once in a while that didn't happen and i guess it's all for the better because the kilowatt is indeed much more better. So I'll just be using this if I, if I ever need to monitor some kind of voltage, current, um, power, power factor, all this other stuff. I'm not going to do a teardown review of this. There's already lots of information out there about the kilowatt thing. So you can go check that out if you want to, if you're interested in that, if you don't have one already. So that's it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something. I know I certainly did, and I will see you later.